Hey all my Crimsonites and welcome to the Crimson Cure channel where we embrace our femininity, increase our womanly values, and celebrate our brothers. So join me on our feminine journey to learn, heal, and grow. Hey there, my Crimson Knights, and welcome to the Crimson Cure channel. I'm your host, Femininity Coach and author of the Crimson Cure, and this is my perspective. So what are we talking about? We back on Tia Mowry. She need to really leave social media alone. Like, stop. Stop it, baby. It's not working. It's not working, baby. We are going to read an interesting little bit of an article, okay? So let me go ahead and share my screen. And we're going to read this article. All right. Y'all can see. Make that big. Y'all can see what this says. I know love will find me again. Girl, girl, bye. Tia Mowry leaves fans thinking there's no chance of reconciliation between her and a strange husband, Corey Hardrick. I mean, I could have told you what no way they was really getting back together the way she paraded around like she was happy. Anyway, fans seem to think Tia Mowry is in a hurry to finalize her divorce from her husband, Corey Hardrick, after seeing an early morning tweet about love finding its way to her. The former couple has spent over two decades together and shared two children, 11-year-old Cree and four-year-old Cairo. From fans' perspectives, Maori is ready to close the romantic relationship part of this chapter and find her next suitor. On February 10th, Sister Sister Star wrote a simple but impactful tweet that read, I know love will find me again. Fans responded in their comments, sharing that they agree love will find its way to her soon. This is the tweet. You definitely will. Just keep being and doing you. And she said it right. It finds you. Don't go looking for it. Indeed, it will just show up unexpectedly, unintentionally. It will land at your feet. Those types of discoveries can't be beat. Wait for it. I mean, really. As the 44-year-old's tweet began to receive more notice, one fan brought up Maori's relationship with Hardrick and mentioned how well paired she thought they were. Yes, but I really did love y'all together. The natural care Hair care enthusiast also posted the message on her Instagram story with the song, Never Leave You Lonely. Uh, Maori and Hardrick's separation announcement came as a surprise to many and has been a topic of conversation since they broke the news in uh, last October. Though neither one has publicly pinpointed the sole reason behind their relationship demise, Hardrick recently denied any act of infidelity on his end, as well as denied his soon-to-be ex-wife's claim of irreconcilable differences, right? So he's saying that's not true either. In court documents obtained by Radar Online, Hardrick's lawyer wanted the court to determine the validity of the prenuptial agreement dated April 14, 2008, and or that any provisions are unconscionable. The All-American home, Homecoming Actors denial of cheating made fans believe that their relationship may have ended because of financial problems. Just one week after Maori informed fans about their split on her Instagram page, social media outlets captured a like from the actress under a certain post that talked about two people having an unequal marriage. An Instagram user who goes by the name of Lee Hammock uploaded a video that gave fans a particular scenario about a married couple with one partner who pays all the bills and the other partner who doesn't contribute financially. In the video, Hammock deemed this is a manipulative tactic and wrote, some toxic people will refuse to contribute around the home in any way. As his caption, Maori seemed to have agreed with the self-proclaimed motivational speaker because she was one out of 539 others who liked the message. So I'm going to stop sharing. Please don't wait till the water runs dry. You might watch your whole life pass you by. Please don't wait till the water runs dry. Make the biggest mistake of our lives. Don't do it, baby. You're looking for love again. Love will find you again. Again being the operative word here because it insinuates and implies that there was love in the first place and that it's gone and you need it to find you. Again, why did you leave that man? Because if he's saying there's no infidelity and irreconcilable differences isn't the issue either, then it's probably what we thought. 
See, you, and, and, and it's not just Tia. She got so many cheerleaders. When she went on this interview circuit, talking about how she had graduated away from her marriage. Did you know it was a graduation? You know, it was there for a season, there for a little bit of a time. And, you know, they got two kids out of it. And, you know, bada boom, bada bing, bada bang. You know, and uh, she's done. Leave the gun, take the cannolis. You know, she done. You graduated, beloved. See, when you graduate out of school, you don't really go back. You don't really want to go back because while it may have been a rewarding experience, you're done with it. So you don't really want to go back. There's nothing really that you would do again or want to do again. Certainly not want to take them classes again and all of that foolishness that was in school when you graduate. See, when you make the accomplishment of graduating away from something, then you're happy that you're gone. And you just look to newer chapters. You know, you look for other things in your life. You don't look for that same stuff that you had going on while you was in school learning and doing your curriculum. Right? So I know full and well, you don't want nothing that was actually happening while you was in marriage school that you graduated from. Hoping that love find you again, which means that you know that man love you. Which means that you know that man love you. She know that man love her. No such thing as perfection in a marriage. No such thing as perfection of a person. No such thing. You've been with that man a long time. I doubt he got any surprises. I doubt that there are any surprises. And I don't want to hear about having a problem with the same stuff that was going on on day one that was going on on day 10,001. I don't want to hear that either. This is why I say after you've been with somebody so long and all the different life situations, they had babies, you know, move, you live together, you, da, 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 da. you had a whole life with this person. That person don't got no surprises. Okay, that person does not, that person should not be able to surprise you, especially not in no bad way. They shouldn't really shouldn't be able to surprise you because you should understand that person so in depth. That it's like they've been doing the same thing. And Corey, I'm sorry, he just looked like the type of person that is a creature of habit. He going to do the same thing from day one to day million and one. He not going to switch it up. And you like that consistency. You like the consistency of a man like that because he become predictable. We're going to get on consistency and predictability later. But whatever happened in that marriage, it's questionable whether or not the terms of it was so egregious that you could not come back from it. And judging by some of the things that she was doing after having announced that she was getting a divorce from Corey, she perpetrated to the world like this was the happiest time of her life and she living it up. Okay. She doing her thing. She doing her baby. She living, you know what I'm saying? She living her best life. Without him, she got her kids all on TikTok. This, that, and the third. She's doing little TikTok challenges and all this kind of stuff. Because she all, all over everywhere talking about how she done graduated from a man. She doing her. Doing you. Correct? So I know we not already, not six months later, already thinking, I wish I had love. Girl, if you don't knock that off, and this is the danger of celebrating stuff like that because you don't know what happens to these people when the lights go off, when there's no TikTok, when there is no camera in their face, when there is no interview, when there's no microphone, when there's nobody else to see them. Y'all got to stop congratulating stupid stuff just because they tell y'all they happy about the whole situation. She not happy. She need to get off social media with these cryptic secret public messages that she putting out there. The message is a secret public, accidentally on purpose. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about, but yet you don't know what I'm talking about. Girl, don't nobody got time for that. Because as soon as you put it out there, folks are going to speculate. Folks is going to comment. People is going to have an opinion because it's out there. You said it. It came from you. It's not even secondhand information. This is coming out of your Twitter account. So you need to get off social media with all of your business. 
Because you now you got to tell the world how you feeling. When you used to have a man that you could tell how you was feeling. Now you got to come get sympathy and come get that attention and come get that, you know what I'm saying, that dopamine hit from the public, the general public. And your subscribers and your followers and all of that type of stuff. And type a little message. Oh, you know, love will find me again. It found you the first time you throw it in the garbage. What is it looking for you for? Why would love be looking for you and finding you as to this is how what you do with it when you get it? You throw it in the garbage after a little while, after it don't excite you no more, after you not feeling it anymore. Stop leaving these situations that might be workable only to actually miss it when it's over and realize that the grass indeed was not greener on the other side. You were actually not happier out of the marriage than you were inside of the marriage. You actually didn't find no more fulfillment. You didn't find any more happiness. You didn't find any more contentment. You didn't find any more peace. You didn't find nothing. And a lot of times, nine times out of 10, in a long marriage like that, if there was, if the, if a marriage like that was devoid of abuses and things like that, and you leave it, you will start missing it. You will miss it. You will miss that consistency because what happens to a woman's life is it get thrown out of order. It get thrown immediately into chaos after she leave the covering of her uh, and the order and the covering of a husband. Life immediately go into chaos mode immediately the dependability and you know what i'm saying the things that she came to depend on and the things that she came to take for granted that was just gonna happen as a part of her life for the past 20 plus years or whatever began to be things that she can't rely on because those are some of the things that he was doing or making sure was getting done now all of a sudden a whole bunch of things that was on his plate are now on her plate and she got to actually consciously think about it and some of that stuff can be juggled and some of it can't. You begin to slowly miss that predictability and that structure. Here's the thing. And I might do, I may do Patreon content on predictability and structures and being boring. But I'm going to give you a little snippet right now. Predictability and a man's system order and structure, it is boring. That's boring. That's even boring to a lioness. I know that's a shocker. A man's predictability and that system order and structure, the consistent system, order, 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 structure, system, order, every day, every night, order, order. It is boring. It's monotonous, actually. It's quite monotonous. When system order and structure is produced in this un- broken the the chain is never broken the the repetition is never ever broken by anything it's always like that every single day that thing actually in and of itself becomes not quite a good thing it needs actually the counter of a woman's chaos that is one reason why we have chaos because we need to interject it into your order now, I know that that sounds counterproductive, but it's actually not. It's actually something that keeps it going. It keeps the spice going. When women interject chaos right in the middle of the SOS, right in the middle of it. Now, here's the, here is the thing. Because we're not trying to break the structure. We are we just trying to shake it. We're just trying to add a little hot sauce on it. You know, we have baked chicken and rice every day. Can we have a little hot sauce today? I need a little sriracha sauce on it today, please. Please, can we get some sriracha? I don't do sriracha every day, but we're going to do sriracha one of these days. One of these days, I'm posting sriracha on that chicken. That is what I mean. Every day you eat the chicken and rice. The chicken and rice tastes good. It's fine. You're good with the chicken and rice. Chicken and rice is excellent. But air once again, not hurt to put a, throw a little hot sauce, a little sriracha sauce on there. That ain't going to hurt nobody. That is the introduction of chaos. The women actually know we're supposed to shake up order. The problem is, is the modern hyena in this day and age don't know how to do that in a helpful way. They only do it, know how to do it in a destructive way. So they only know how to inject the chaos destructively or negatively. So they'll pick an argument with you. They'll pick a fight with you. You know what I'm saying? Find something to be mad at you about. Find something to argue with you about. 
find something to upset you with. Just find something randomly, make you mad. Purposely. They purposely, they on purpose, they making you mad. They want to see you get mad, right? They want to see that's that's them interjecting chaos, but it is negative. It's a negative way of doing it. It's a way that actually brings misery and turmoil and anger, not a way that brings fun and just a break from the norm. That a lioness does it differently. We interject that, we interject chaos too, because we have to. We get I'm I'm going to eat the chicken and rice, but I'm going to put sriracha sauce on it today. I'm going to put sriracha sauce on yours too. Not just mine, yours. You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna be hot in the mouth because I put I pulled a ton of it. You'll be okay. We can go back to the plain chicken and rice tomorrow, but tonight we got it with sriracha sauce on it. I love sriracha sauce. Anyway, anyway I like it better than regular hot sauce, but whatever. Never mind. Anyway, lionesses interject chaos as well here's how you do it in a way that actually makes men peaceful and make them like your ability to interject your chaos sexual spontaneity that's one if you got into a rhythm long marriages have a tendency to get into rhythms of sex you got sex here and you know the schedule got in the way and then but so we only be having time in the morning and be like, whatever you run into a routine that's one of the things that go along with system order structure is the routine everything happens on this schedule at this time it just falls like that it just is the way it is so sexual spontaneity actually is is a thing a way in which to interject chaos that doesn't bring misery it actually should bring solace and peace and it's fun right? That's one. Changing, doing something else. Change your home decor like on a budget or some DIY type stuff. Like do that. Do some DIY stuff in your home. When he come in, it's different in here. You don't have to break the bank. You don't have to, you know, be extravagant, but it's different in here. Just change the vibe a little bit, but make sure that the vibe is still positive that you change to, right? Do things like find some kind of new hobby, find a different interest, develop a new domestic skill, work on a new uh, recipe, work on the area of cooking that you weak in. Sometimes people are not good bakers. Sometimes people are not good with sweets or whatever the case may be. Find something to do. Actually find something to occupy yourself. Something that's out of the norm of what you do, but still something positive, something good. Usually nine times out of 10 doing stuff like this, it's unexpected. So that's where the chaos portion of it actually comes in at. But most of the time, this doesn't ruffle men's feathers at all. This won't ruffle their feathers. They, you know, change your hair, change your clothes, you know, a little style or whatever. A lot of times men won't, that won't ruffle their feathers. You know, it won't make them mad. They'll be, look, they might laugh or they might be surprised or they'll be like, whoa, whoa, girl, what you want? You know what I'm saying? What you doing? But it won't be this knock down, drag out, horrible thing that you did. That now y'all got to rethink the whole relationship because, you know what I mean? So you got to find a positive way to inter interject that chaos. I'm saying all this because this is how you keep long marriages going longer without the drudgery. You're going to go back to the order because men are going to reassert order. That's a part of their nature. They need something chaotic that they can reassert order into. They actually need to do that. But what they don't need is to have to do that negatively, negatively in, in a way that disrupts them and in a way that disrupts the relationship. Hope that helped you. Um, before we let go, jump down into the description box and click the link uh, for CrimsonCure.com and get your copy of Reclaiming the Black Feminine, Lies of Feminism and the Road to Recovery on sale now. Crimson Cure at crimsoncure.com, you get the physical copy. Um, it's also on sale uh, and on Amazon, and that link is also in the description box. Jump down into the comment section. Let me know what you think. Like, share, subscribe to the channel. If you're not, once again, I'm your host of Crimson Cure, and this was my perspective. Bye-bye, Crimsonites.